The Roborock S7 is the first robot vacuum and mop combination that is truly hands-free. The S7 is the first robot that will automatically raise the mop when it approaches carpet, which allows it to continue vacuuming. In the real world, this makes a huge difference because on any other hybrid, a hard floor surrounded by carpet becomes like an island, and when the mop is attached, you have to carry it down to the other end of the house, press play, and then carry it back to the base once it's done. The S7's mop raise feature means that you can simply leave the mop on all the time, and it will mop and vacuum on hard floors every single time, and then raise the mop and continue vacuuming on carpet without making a mess. 5mm doesn't sound like a lot, so at first I was a bit suspicious about whether this would be enough. I found that in my apartment it worked perfectly on the carpet, it wasn't even slightly damp to the touch. On the S7 Plus model, it includes an auto empty station, or a Robodock as they're calling it. It's the very first auto empty station on a Roborock robot vacuum. Roborock tell us that this can store up to 30 cleans, which in real terms means that it can go one to two months without emptying, depending on whether you have any pets or anything like that. What's cool is that there's a bagged and bagless option. With the bag version, obviously it keeps all of the dust contained, which is great for people with asthma or allergies, but it does add a little extra cost. With the bagless one though, you can simply remove the container and carry it to the bin and empty it, and it's all super straightforward. The S7, like all Roborocks, uses LiDAR to navigate. That is a laser that sits under this turret here, and it scans the room in 360 degrees to get coordinates of exactly where it is all the time. The first time you use it, you simply press play, and it will drive around the house and explore, and it'll take scans of every room and build a super accurate floor plan. Once you've got the floor plan, you can add virtual barriers through the app. You just draw lines on the app, and the robot will know not to cross them. These are super useful if you have any tricky pieces of furniture, or even just when the ranch light is open, it will stop it from going outside. On the front bumper, it has a secondary infrared sensor, which is essentially like a short distance vision, which helps it to slow as it approaches a wall and stops it from hitting the bumper. It has a couple of other ones on the side, which just help it to align nice and close along edges and walls. On the front, it has a bump sensor, which takes about 50 grams of force, just in case it doesn't stop in time, it will stop it from damaging any furniture. On the bottom, we have secondary laser system, which detects drops and falls. So obviously this means on the second level of the house, it won't fall down the stairs. The Roborock S7 has 2,500 pascals of suction. There are other models out there with slightly more, but the cool thing about the S7 is that the vacuuming head actually floats or moves and it follows the contours of the floor so it can form a seal, which actually means that it's really good at deep cleaning and particularly at picking things up in crevices. So on the S7, the brushes are actually all rubber. The advantage of a rubber brush over a bristle brush is that a bristle brush will tangle a lot of hair along it, whereas a rubber brush will collect a little bit along the edges, but it won't tangle any amongst the brush itself. The side brush is also rubber because when it's mopping and it gets quite wet, a standard bristled side brush tends to mat and stick to the floor. So while there are advantages to the cleaning performance, and I would say it's a net gain, they are both a little bit louder than a bristled brush, which you'll see later on in the audio test. So like all robot vacuums, the S7 has two main drive wheels and a little caster wheel. The main wheels are on a spring-loaded system and it's just got the same amount of pressure as the weight of the robot. So if it comes up against any resistance at all, it can lift itself up and keep those drive wheels on the ground so that it doesn't get stuck. So if you're not using the auto empty station, you can manually empty the Roborock S7 by lifting up the dustbin flap like this and then simply clipping it out and carrying it to the bin and emptying it. It's super easy to refill the water for the mop. You simply press down on the orange tab, carry it to the tap, fill it up and clip it back in. The mopping pad is a removable attachment, but because it can raise itself, you can essentially just leave it on all the time and just remove it to clean it. So a typical hybrid vacuum mop combo simply just drags a mopping pad around the floor and keeps it wet by dripping water onto it. In this case though, the S7 is one of the few combos that actually actively scrubs the floor. Roborock are calling this sonic mopping. This so-called sonic mopping is actually just small vibrations. It's kind of like a, feels like a massage gun. Roborock claim that this is four times more effective than a standard drag around mop and it does make sense because it's actively scrubbing the floor. So let me explain how the mop raise feature works in the real world. So if the mopping pad is attached, it will be vacuuming and mopping whenever it's on hard floors. So it'll finish vacuum and mopping and then when it approaches carpet, the ultrasonic sensors will automatically detect the carpet and raise the mop. 
It raises the mop by about 5 mils, which is actually enough so that it avoids wetting and making a mucky mess on the carpet. The vacuum will then continue to vacuum, and as soon as it detects that it's back on hard floors, it'll lower the mop again and continue to vacuum and mop. As I mentioned previously, that means you no longer have to carry the mop between separate hard floor areas that have carpet dividing them. Now let's talk a little bit about how the Roborock actually performed in the real world. Anyone that's ever been on a robot vacuum forum will know that Roborock has a pretty cult-like following and it's mainly based upon its excellent navigation and app. The Roborock did really well in the navigation. It's gentle, it's methodical. Interestingly enough, it does segment the room slightly different to other LiDAR robots, but I wouldn't say it's better or worse in that regard. Because it doesn't have secondary obstacle avoidance, it did still kind of get caught on small cables and little objects on the floor, but it did perform about as well as any other premium LiDAR robot would. Of course, being LiDAR, it works on black carpet, it works in the dark, you don't need to leave the lights on so you can vacuum while you're sleeping. As I said, it's very methodical. It'll cover each spot once, unless it has to transit over it again later, but it'll get nice and close to the walls. It'll brush that side brush up against the wall. Like I said, because it's rubber, it does make a different sound. It sounds a little bit funny, but it's not too bad. Definitely not something to concern yourself with. In terms of real world vacuuming performance, it does actually do a really good deep clean. And I'd say that it's up there as good as anything else on the market. In terms of actual mopping performance, because it's vibrating, it does do a pretty good job. It does similar to what you'd do with a stick, but it won't do what you could do if you get down on your hands and knees with a cloth. It won't remove super stubborn stains, but it will do a good job of keeping on top of things if you use it regularly. I actually personally really like the look of it. I think in photos or in videos it doesn't really stand out, but in person it looks really solid and chunky and just all the lines are quite simple and the, even just the orange touch on the tab on the back. It all just works nicely, it's probably my favourite looking robot vacuum. Also the auto empty station has got a completely different style guide to everyone else. Most other people are going with quite basic shapes, whereas this one here has got a nice rounded design. You can tell that they've really put a lot of effort into the design of it. I think when you see it sitting at home in the, in the corner of your room, it's just, it's just satisfying. So the Roborock app can be found on either App Store or the Play Store, depending on whether you're on Android or Apple. Once you go into it, you can see that I have a Roborock S7, it's already connected, and I can go in and look at it. It takes about five to 10 minutes to connect and it's pretty straightforward. The first time that you use it, it will create an, a map like the one that I'm seeing. Obviously you won't see a map like this, you just press play and it'll go out and it'll explore and it'll build the map up. Once it's done you'll see something like this, you can see that the white lines are showing me where it's been. The basic operation is super straightforward and simple, you can see here because it's on the dock right now I have the option to empty the dustbin or I can send it out to clean. Once you've got your map, there's lots of ways you can customise it. You simply go into your settings, manage maps, and here we go, we can edit it. I can add no-go zones, I can edit my rooms, I can customise the cleaning in each specific room so I can increase onto max mode in certain rooms and then eco mode if I want it to be quieter in other areas of the house. You can also set sequences so that it will clean the kitchen first and then bedroom one, two, three before doing the lounge last. For example, if I want to customise how intensely it cleans in each room, I click on the customise takes me through and as you can see I've already split out the rooms into different segments so blue, green, orange and yellow. To customise it I just click on each room, there we go, and I've got it on balanced vacuum power but in the lounge I actually want it to do max mode to get a nice deep clean. I can also change the scrub intensity and I can change it to do a deeper or a standard route. So in the deep one it will cover the spots more than once. To add a virtual barrier or an invisible wall I select this option here. I zoom into the area that I want to edit, and as you can see, I just drag it, select the area, and then click save. Now the robot won't go over that area in the map, so it's really useful if you want to isolate long shag piled rugs, or if you have expensive music equipment, or even a dog bowl if you find that it's pumping up. As you can see, I've got two floor plans saved here. I've got downstairs and I've got upstairs. Obviously that means you can save multiple maps and you can customize them and add virtual barriers on all of them. This is super useful for people with multi-level homes or you could even use it in different homes if you wanted to. If you want to change the cleaning settings for the whole house, you can simply click into general and then you've got your vacuuming power and you've got your scrum intensity. Obviously this will also change the water flow rate. So if you want to clean something that's particularly 
uh, stubborn, you can increase the water flow. If I were to click clean now, as you can see, it will go and clean the entire house, excluding the areas where I've added the virtual barriers. However, if I want to, I can select room, and I can select a room and click clean, and it will just go and clean that once. If I wanted to, I can click it so that it will do it twice. Otherwise, if I want to clean just a specific zone, but it's not specifically one room, I can just select an area and click clean and it will go and do the job. Every time the robot returns to charge, if there's an auto empty station, it will empty the dustbin. But if you wanted to do it at night and you didn't want to wake everyone up, you can turn that off and then you can manually press this button here. As you can see, the app is fully featured. There's a whole lot of settings that you can play with as you go into robot settings. Uh, there's even a child lock, so we can turn it off if you don't want the buttons to work, if your kid keeps starting it at six o'clock every morning. You can change the time zone, turn it off, on or off the lights. In the carpet settings, you can change it so that it will automatically boost the vacuuming performance when it detects it's on carpet. Or you can, if you wanted to, turn off the mop rise feature. You can make it avoid the carpet when it's got the mop attached, or you can just make it ignore it altogether and use manual no mop zones through the app. In the robot voice, you have other languages, in the remote control, you can manually drive it if that's your thing. You can also see a cleaning history. As you can see, we've been doing lots of testing with it. So we've got lots of random tests, but you can click into each specific clean. And you'll see here that it's done everywhere that we let it get to in that specific clean. It also keeps us up to date on what maintenance needs to be done. As you can see, our filters and side brush and main brush all have a percentage next to them. Uh, we're all doing pretty good even after using it for a few weeks. It says that the filter has 140 hours remaining and the side brush has 190 hours remaining. In real terms, that means that the filter is probably gonna to need to be replaced every one to three months, depending on how much dust and pet hair you've got around. And the side brush and main brush need to be replaced every six to 12 months. As we always do, we put the robot through our standardized cleaning test to see how it compares. The Roborock is famous for its cleaning performance and this came to light in the deep pile carpet test where it collected 100% of the seeds scattered across the carpet. We then measured out 20 grams of Fruit Loops and the S7 picked up 19 of the 20 grams giving it a score of 95% on this test. A long hair test is obviously quite unrealistic unless you own a barbershop, but it's always interesting to see how much it picks up and how much it actually tangles around the brush. As you can see, it picked up all of the long hair in our testing station, with most of the hair actually being transferred into the dustbin, rather than wrapping around the brush, which is a common problem with most other robots. On this test, we gave it a score of 98% to account for instances where the robot did not pick up all of the hair on the first pass. Turning to the hard floor test, the Roborock's cleaning performance once again shone through in our coffee test, where it managed to pick up 99% of the coffee. The 1% accounts for the very minor wheel marks that were left as the robot did crush some of the dried coffee. On a side note, we think that the weight of the robot is also a good thing because it adds to the durability and performance. The S7 also picked up 98% of the fruit loops we scattered. Again, the weight of the robot definitely crushed a few of those fruit loops. Turning to the mopping test, we were interested in the sonic mopping technology. It's new to us and Roborock has been saying this is a game changer, so we really wanted to see it in action. As you can see, the mop handled the grape juice fine on the first pass, so we gave it 100% on that test. The syrup was a bit stickier, as you would expect, and the robot actually left a small amount of syrup in the top right corner that you may be able to see on the camera. Ultimately, we gave it about an 85 on that test. On its quietest mode, the S7 runs at 60 decibels, which is about 10 decibels quieter than the standard vacuum cleaner. On max mode, the S7 got up to 73 decibels. Although this robot doesn't actually have object avoidance technology, we did want to see how much it bumped objects that got in its way. As you can see, it lightly touches and moves around the power cord, and it also touches the dog ball, but it does move around it once it recognizes that it's there. I think that the Roborock S7 is an awesome option for people with larger homes, maybe with pets or kids, that just want to keep their floors cleaner than ever before with the minimal amount of human input. The Roborock S7, as you would expect from a Roborock flagship, performed excellently on all of our tests and in the real world. I hope you found this video useful. Please let us know down below if there's anything you'd like us to include in future videos. As you can see, we're a pretty new channel, so we'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe because we've got lots of other cool videos coming shortly.